Hey, good afternoon, Orlando. And uh, to everybody watching at home, hello, hebo, hola, konnichiwa. Let's get started. I know I'm holding up lunch. Websites and APIs are growing astronomically. Forbes said there's 1.13 billion websites today, and new websites deployed every three seconds. 71% of all businesses have a web application now. And I'm not talking about a corporate website. I'm talking about the pub down the street, the neighborhood deli, your friend who has a dog grooming service. They've all got websites. And if you don't think they're being targeted by malicious actors, I will tell you, I've set up honey pots. And when, within minutes, without even having a website, I'm getting port scanned. I'm getting tested. So everybody's a target. 28% of all businesses are conducted through websites. And we all know by now, 80% plus of all web traffic today is for API. So the attack surface here is expanding. That's creating challenges for your application security programs. 50% of cybersecurity professionals report security as an afterthought. And then when you couple that with 92% of all developers in the same poll saying, hey, we're being rushed to deploy, you've got a real problem. Oftentimes, we look at these scans as a compliance check, you know, a checks box driven scan. Are we scanning everything in our inventory? Is the AppSec program in our CICD pipeline? And we're just overwhelmed by findings. For example, Optus, summer of 2022, they had a hack against one of their API endpoints. This occurred when a 19 year old actor found a uh, misconfigured, unauthenticated, forgotten API in their environment that he was able to extract one third of all of Australia's population's telephone records. He put in a phone number, he'd get their information out. They noticed this behavior on September 20th, September 22nd, they acknowledged the breach publicly. Two days later, there was a ransom for the data, 1.5 million. Thankfully, this particular actor had a change of heart when he saw all the attention it was getting and he dropped the ransom, and everybody learned some valuable lessons from this. So why does apps, application security matter? Well, it matters because it helps you to prioritize your organizational security. It helps you protect your sensitive data. It meets your compliance and regulatory requirements, and it prevents business disruption. 95% of all data breaches last year were through web applications. 56% in the past five years alone were through web apps. Web app vulnerability, excuse me, web app breaches have cost $76 billion total. And when you look at the 42% of all business financial losses due to application attacks, it really should be an alarm bell if you don't have a solid application security program. The reality of today, malicious actors will find your vulnerabilities. Applications are not built secure by design. Last year, we looked at 370,000 web applications we were scanning, found 25 million vulnerabilities, of which 33% were through misconfigurations. Misconfigurations, security misconfigurations, meaning I was able to do directory traversal. I was able to uh, pull out stack traces and start to identify your underlying, underlying architecture, all right? These things are what allow websites to get disrupted, attacked, taken over. So what's the solution to all that? Well, the solution is Qualys WAS, an industry-leading web application and API scanning tool. We are able to scan web applications and APIs, not only for like OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities, but security misconfigurations, compliance issues, everything you need to make sure that your web applications and APIs are secure. We can help you de-risk your organization and your applications with Qualys WAS, where we can help you measure, communicate, and eliminate the risks to these apps and APIs I've got some things listed here, but we're going to jump to them on the next slide. Lord Kelvin said, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. If you don't know who Lord Kelvin is, he's the one who came up with the Kelvin measurement for temperature. Absolute zero is absolute Kelvin. So he knows about measuring things. You can't fix a problem if you don't understand that problem. So we offer you comprehensive web application discovery and inventory, where if it's internal applications, we can help you find them cloud hosted or external applications through WAS and our scans, our VMDR platform tools, our CSAM external attack service management tools as well. We can help you find those lost or forgotten web applications and add them to your inventory so that you're scanning them and are protected today. 
actionable findings to measure true risk, right? So we've been talking a lot about true risk, really understanding the risk a vulnerability poses to your environment. So not only are we going to report to you things like your common weakness enumeration scores, your OWASP top 10 scores, any kind of known exploit vulnerabilities, your CVSS scores. We're also going to provide you recommendations and full request responses so that you and your developers can understand the nature of these vulnerabilities. Ecosystem integration for greater visibility. So if you're using manual pen test tools like Burp, or if you're using bug bounty and they're giving you findings, you can bring that into WAS so you can consolidate all your findings into one location. Moving on to communication. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that has already taken place. George Bernard Chart, famed uh, author, playwright, I think what his point here is that as a security professional, we kind of think we've conveyed the risk. You know, we, we say, hey, this is, you know, the sky's falling. We've uh, talked to the CISO, the CISO talks to the board, but clearly we're not doing a great job communicating risk. So with Qualys, we can help you with that by helping to get that communication to your developers through effective automated ticketing integrations. Whether you've got ServiceNow or you're using Jira, you can configure WAS to take the scan results and filter them by your criteria, maybe your severity three, four, fives, and automatically create tickets for them in ServiceNow or Jira so that you're not sending a scan report to your developers for remediation. You can also build security right into your CI CD frameworks. As part of your build operations, as when they complete a build, a post build action can be kicked off to launch a WAS scan so that they can get results right in the tools they're using that can identify the vulnerabilities in their software so they can continue to fix them in the design phase where it's significantly easier and cheaper to resolve. And then we have uh, the ability for customized data visibility. Whether you're using dashboards and widgets to really trickle up the important information for your organization, or you're creating scheduled reports to automatically send out these reports, we've got a solution for that. And if you're creative, our API allows you to extend that functionality for your own custom solutions. I've seen people create Slack notifications because that's where their engineers work, or email notifications, or team notifications. So you put the information where the people are in the existing processes so you can communicate it effectively. Even a correct decision is wrong when it was taken too late. Lee Iacocca, one of our titans of the automotive industry. So let's talk about eliminating that risk. Qualys True Risk allows you to prioritize your web applications and your APIs and plan remediation based on intelligent risk algorithms. So not only are we looking at the severity itself and applying our own algorithms to that score, but we will also consider the, uh, uh, the risk of that asset itself so that you can identify, hey, these are my flagship applications. Even a severity three on this should have a greater weight than a severity four on one of our other internal facing applications. And with Qualys True Risk, we can help you give that visibility. Now, web applications are kind of unique. The way you fix them is you actually got to get in there and remediate the source code. So we will also help you remediate that by, in our detailed section about the vulnerability, we will tell you the vulnerability issue and help identify what you need to do to fix it. Here's a hint. If you always validate input and encode output, you're well on your way to a successful application security program. We can also help you secure vulnerable libraries. We will report when you're using a vulnerable open source library and give recommendations on what you should upgrade it to or patch it with. Oftentimes, we think of web applications, they are not commercial software, they're custom built. But occasionally, you will get a CVE finding when you use some commercial component, like WordPress, plugins, et cetera. In which case, for those CVE ones, we will also provide you with vendor-specific patching details. And finally, security misconfigurations, the most common vulnerability we saw. When we come across that, say you're missing your content security policy, you're now uh, open to click jacking or directory traversal or any number of security misconfigurations, we'll help you set your security headers, your uh, web app configurations, your server configurations, so that you are closing the gap between these security misconfigurations and having a secure site. All right, I think I'm doing pretty good. Measure, communicate, and eliminate risk with Qualys WAS. We offer you comprehensive dis discovery, PI collection exposure detection, ecosystem consolidation, API scanning, malware detection, CICD integrations, ticketing integrations, and now Qualys True Risk. 
I do want to highlight that we are a Gigamon leader for 2023. Recently re received their award. Uh, if you're already a customer, contact your TAM for a free trial. If you're new to Qualys, you can sign up for a free POC and start scanning today. And uh, at this time, I would like to bring out our customer, Jeremy from Veritif, to talk about how they're using Qualys WAS to test embedded devices. Jeremy. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Jeremy Block from Vertiv. Uh, we're based out of Columbus, Ohio. And a little bit about me, I have been in the embedded system space for almost 20 years now. And in that 20 years, I have played kind of both sides of the development of those embedded systems, both on the engineering side as well as on the security side. And one thing that has become clear to me over the years is that the most successful projects that I've uh, participated in are ones where security and engineering are on the same page. So as much as those groups don't like to admit it, they need each other to be successful. And that has been the premise of what we've brought and what I've brought into Vertiv to the product security program there. Now, what do we do? We basically provide a lot of the infrastructure to data centers, the thermal um, control, the power delivery, Basically think about everything that might take to run a data center, and those are the products that we deliver as a company. That means that there is a lot of diversity across our customer base. We have over 750,000 customers on nearly every continent in the globe, and that brings us to a lot of um, different deployments, different environments. And so kind of like the uh, insurance jingle goes, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. And because a lot of our devices are embedded, but they still provide web application type services, our engineering teams are challenged with kind of an interesting problem. And that problem is these embedded systems look a lot like your traditional web applications um, that you guys might be more familiar with, but we have certain limitations. Those are limitations on resources. These are tiny little embedded devices that are focused on something, so they're not granted lots of extra compute or extra memory or things like that. Updating these things are also not as straightforward. Um, a lot of them don't, are not designed to call up to a cloud to say, hey, you got an update for me? I'd like to apply this. Um, in fact, some of the environments that they're deployed in don't even permit that type of uh, communication out there, which means the patching window is very difficult and can be very lengthy. So we have to maximize the efficiency and the patches that we put out there um, and the firmware that we're developing to make sure that what we're shipping out, we're not going to have to turn around and make a change um, in a few weeks or a month or so because that window is a very precious window. So what we've done is try to bring a lot of our security expectations backwards into the development flow. And it's very imperative because engineering has a ton of things to work on. They have features, they have bugs, um, they have a huge backlog of items. And so we want to make sure that we're not participating and contributing to the noise in these engineering teams, which means we need to make sure anything we send them is accurate. It has contextually actionable information in there so they can take the appropriate um, steps from that. We need to make sure that it's measurable of some kind. Like I said, these engineers have tons of work and tons of backlog of things, so we need to be able to accurately prioritize the stuff that we're finding and give them the tools to balance that among all the other features that are coming in, all the other bug requests and things like that. So it was critical that we had some sort of scoring mechanism that we can then factor into our own internal risk rating um, and help those engineering teams prioritize. The next, we wanted to make sure we could identify security misconfigurations as well. And we wanted to do all of this in the most automated way possible. And so what my team has really done is to keep things clear and concise and leverage a lot of the API ability within the Qualys platform to kind of push back the Qualys capabilities really early in the development phase. And the way we have done this is all of our firmwares are basically built in various pipelines and the security team has augmented those pipelines to run security checks. And it's a little more fancy than that because those pipelines can take that firmware that comes out of that build process. It can then send it to an actual unit device that's in our testing labs. We can flash that device with that newer firmware. We then leverage the API within Qualys to say, hey, we got this new target. We know what the target is. We know what profile to run against it. And Qualys can fire off its scan. 
When it's done, we can then leverage the API calls, pull that report back. Now our engineers happen to work in various tools and things like that, but we wanna make sure that we keep this very low friction. So we can parse that report, send out the relevant information where it's applicable to the engineering teams and bring that so they can take an actions and bake that in. What's even nicer about this is this is not a release process type thing. We have built this framework so that when the engineers are just trying something new, pull in their one patch, their one branch, they can simply just click a button and send it through the rest of the security pipeline. I equate it to a spelling test as a child. You know every question and every answer so that when we finally get to release timing, there's nothing out there for the security team to say, oh my gosh, you guys don't have this stuff done because they know exactly the things that we're going to measure them against when they start their work. And that's really brought us to a lot of benefits. Um, we have much more efficient with how we do that. Um, we can get prioritization in there with the engineering teams. And this has given our customers greater trust because you know, they're gonna run similar scan tools against our products in their environment. And it's nice when you run that and you get your clean bill of health. And so it's just some of the ways that we've leveraged the platform, John. All right, thank you very much. Mike, uh, if you'd like to hear more about WAS or see a demo, catch me outside. How about that? I'll be at the QA bar. And uh, otherwise, have a great lunch. Thank you.